Well, I'd like to do a film about this now, a few paintings as well, but to show you around the whole of the northern Norfolk Broads. I'm now 62 years old, and I first came down when I was 12 years old. So we're going to see some photographs from the past and some pictures that I've done in the past that are up to 50 years old. The, picture, the paintings were ones that I did earlier, they're about 20 years old. But some of the photographs when I was 12 and onwards were when I was first introduced to the Broads by my old friend Richard Ince, who was a woodwork teacher of mine at the time, the school I went to. He took us sailing there with parties of boys and girls, and I then followed that on, linking with him, having been a student of his and then becoming a teacher myself, and taking groups with him, and eventually taking groups on my own. Sometimes up to 80 children at a time, with other teachers as well, of course. We took these trips around the Broads, adventure holidays, a bit like the old Arthur, Arthur Ransom, Swallows in the Amazons and so on. Those were days when children could enjoy themselves without too many rules and regulations, swinging off the boats on ropes and swimming and all sorts of fun that they find much more difficult now, unfortunately. So let's just take a look at some of the beautiful scenery around the Broads and then we'll take a look at some older photographs. And then I want to show you around the whole of the northern broads, which is the most interesting of the broads, and we'll take little trips to each one, and eventually I'll do some paintings in between of various parts of the broads, just to show you different techniques that we could use in doing the paintings. Two of these will be on plein air, two of them actually in my little boat at the time. And here's a picture of my old friend Richard. Unfortunately he now died a few years back, but his memory lives on and all the help he gave to many students, including myself there, up the mast, so it just shows you how young I was then. On the beaches that we'll see during this film, there I am again with that 60s long haircut. And as these old postcards and photographs will show, not a lot has changed in all of that time. Many of the old boatyards are now gone and now become little housing estates and so on, but the actual broads themselves fortunately have remained very much the same. The wildlife is still just as extensive and wonderful, and if anything the water quality is even better than it used to be. For the school parties we nearly always hired the boats, wonderful old japonicas and early wooden craft from Martham Boat Development and Herbert Woods Yard and so on. But later on I managed to get my own boat as you see here. Since then having a whole series of craft from various dinghies to cruisers and into yachts. The school trips were wonderful times with children learning much on their adventures, not only about themselves but about relationships with each other, how to work as a crew, how to cook, clean, tidy, take their part, play their part as individuals and as a team. I remember one parent coming up to me afterwards and saying, what have you done to my little Maureen? She's a totally changed child. I said, oh, how is that? Well, she said, before they went away they couldn't even open a tin, but this morning she cooked us breakfast and brought it to us in bed. Educating children is such a broad thing, it's not just reading and writing, there's so much more for them to learn about life skills. On trips like this, children of all ability found their paths, and I'm pleased to say that even after these 50 years I still have boys and girls getting back in touch with me, and even have one young man who invites me to his pheasant shoots now. He's now a successful businessman and earns more money than I ever did. So I and they have many fond memories. We have ghost stories and we also have adventure stories of things that happened in the pheasant woods and so on, all of which are very amusing. One of which I can tell you is one young man who was rather greedy and every time he came into a cabin would grab somebody's bottle of lemonade or in some cases shandy and drink it without any asking. We soon put a stop to this and planning ahead we filled an empty beer bottle with some river water and just put the cap back on. The plan was that as he came into the cabin he would see this, one of us reaching out for it and grab it and drink it, which he duly did, straight into the cabin, saw one of the boys reaching out to grab the bottle, snatched it himself, flipped the top off, whipped it straight back and started drinking and it was a couple of seconds before he realised it was not the liquid he expected. When we explained it he was rather sheepish and uh, didn't try that trick again. There was always something going on for them. We would hold rope climbing uh, activities, dinghy races, canoe races and so on. We took our own canoes with us. I built several fleets of 12 or 15 canoes with several schools that I worked at. Our own fiberglass canoes. Every trip we always took a walk down to these wonderful sand dunes with the children and we'd leap about on those sand dunes and give them a chance to take the skippers on. They'd come and pile onto us and we'd have a right good scrap. But all in fun, but it gave them a chance to loosen up and get to relate to us as people, not just people in authority, teachers. It's quite possible that part of my reasons for having such a bad back is due to this, but all in good fun. 
Although there are still a few schools that visit the broads, it's not as it was before at all. New government rules and regulations and the nanny state has changed so much that nobody dares sneeze on a child, let alone take them out to activity like that where they can jump into the water and swim. So here you see me 25 years ago with my little yacht and then my pebble cobble that I had up at Flamborough Head and fished off the sea with as well. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to return to the broads. It would be nice, yes, let us hope. But just in case, here's a record of what we've done. Now some paintings from the past. These are 20 or 30 years old as well. All of these were painted on plein air or in situ, actually out there alive, except for one. Photographs do tend to bleach out so much of the colour and light, so I can find much more colour when I'm actually working there in life. And as an impressionist, I like to capture the very moment, the mood, different times of the day, different lights and atmosphere. These two were painted at Woodbridge in Suffolk, and then we go back to Norfolk onto the beach in a misty afternoon, a very fast study, and then to Horsey Windmill that we're going to see later in the photographs, and finally back to Suffolk on the River Waveney. Now where is Norfolk? It's situated about halfway up England on the east coast, in that red area you can see marked there, just below the wash. Here's an old postcard showing the areas of the Norfolk Broads, but we're only going to deal with the upper part, the northern part of that because that's where, to us, the most interesting freshwater broads are, in this section we're looking at now. And we're going to start off at Potter Hyam, which you see just centre right. Although the broads are freshwater, they all empty out into the sea, so they are affected tidally by the sea. I've chosen a little caravan and camping site that I used many, many years ago when it used to be owned by Mr and Mrs Strange. Now very similar, but it's been opened up a little bit more, and it's ideally suited being next to Rep Stathe, which is the stay that I can launch the boat with a little assistance. It's also within range of Potterheim still, which is very useful for shopping and other activities. We've arrived in late August, so late summer, early autumn, still plenty of wildlife about flowers and insects. Here's the nearby Stathe and Slipway where I've got my little boat, as you can see there. And then just further down the river is that famous old bridge, the very low bridge of Potterheim. The Norfolk Broads are not natural. They were actually dug as peat pits by early man, and then interconnecting rivers were made. And they've since become not only habitable, but uh, obviously were used for transport as well. Later we shall see a series of photographs of very large sailing boats called wherries, and these were both for passengers and for transport of goods, two different types. Huge sails, great big boats that were either towed or sailed uh, up and down these rivers. There's been many a boat come unstuck here going underneath. You see the yachts have to dismast to swing down the mast to get underneath the bridge and quant underneath or use their motors. Some cruisers are too large and they need a pilot to get them under. Obviously the tidal um, height is also uh, important as to whether a boat can get under or not. Here's Herbert Wood's boatyard, been there for many, many years and I'm glad to see it's still running strongly. We not only have hired boats in there, but I used to keep my boats moored under cover there for many years. Potterheim itself has not changed much. There used to be a wonderful old pub just to the right of the bridge there. It, this was in fake black and white. But, since then it's burnt down, as has the tourist office recently as well. The main shop, which has gone from strength to strength and is now a large supermarket, is Latham's. There's been a fish and chip shop there ever since I've known as well, in one of the old buildings for 50 years. It used to be wonderful fish and chips, but I regret to say that now I was very disappointed not only with the price, but the quality, and wouldn't recommend it in fact. I would say Chroma has far better fish and chips. Unfortunate that I have to say this. Unfortunately, this can often be the case where there's a slight tourist trap and people think that standards can be dropped and prices raised. On the whole, though, we found that everywhere else was of a high standard. All of the pubs we visited and had bar meals or so on were of excellent quality and reasonable price. Of course, they were catering for the masses and a half of the food to two-thirds was uh, frozen pre-prepared. But if you were careful and looked at the menu, you could find the best deals and the best produce. 
You'll see that in these inhabited areas, there have been little cabins placed along the side and the banks. They can't just place these anywhere, in fact, it's not allowed because of planning. But they've been there for many, many years. Nearly all are on leasehold, and actually these small cabins are quite expensive, fetching up to one and a half to two thousand pounds, many of them, for the week's rent. And if you actually want to buy one, then you can be looking at 150 to 200,000 just for this wooden shack. So lovely to see Marth and Boat Development Company still there, still active and still renting out both cruisers and yachts, because this is where my story first starts. This is where I was first introduced to the broads on these beautiful old boats, the Japonicas and so on, these beautiful gaff-rigged sailing boats, traditional craft. And we were able to hire dinghies to go with them as well, nearly always loose-footed lug sails. Many of the buildings with sails are not in fact windmills but wind pumps that used to pump the water up from the lower levels back into the broads and the rivers. As with so much flat country like Holland, we have wonderful skies in both Lincolnshire, Norfolk and Suffolk. And Norfolk has some beautiful sunsets, which we'll see later in the film. If you look at the outer edge of the bridge as you come up to it, underneath it, you'll see the, the score marks and scrapes from various accidents of my boats of many years past. Now let's take a trip up to Hickling Broad and up to Horsey Mere, where the famous big pike was caught many years ago by Neville Fickling. There are some huge pike in this area, and I can tell you a story we were sailing once of a young lad whose flat cap got knocked off by the boom of the boat, and as it floated in the water behind, a vast pike came up and grabbed it and dragged it underwater. I've also seen this happen on, uh, abroad near Ranworth, um, where again a yacht was tacking up the river and one of its fenders dragging behind like a white duck was grabbed by a monster pike and the people's expression was quite horrified as they looked across and saw this vast gaping mouth tangled in the fender until it managed to thrash and let go. Not only are the broads interconnected by rivers, but also much of it is quite shallow, so you have to keep between the marker posts. We keep the right-hand green ones to the right, and we keep the red ones to the left. Having wound your way round the narrow river to Horsey Mere, at the very end is a small dike which leads down to the windmill itself, and there you can moor up and walk down to the beach. It used to be quite a dangerous walk, you used to have to go along the road, but now they've opened up public footpaths along the roadside and through the fields so that you're quite safe and can get down to the local pub and across to the sand dunes. At the time we were there there were quite a lot of bird watchers with very expensive cameras because a roller had been seen. All I managed to film was a kestrel but he did obligingly come very close and land to the post next to us. This area is all part of Horsey Mere Estate and has been well maintained, beautifully looked after and plenty of wildlife. But notice that the buildings are mainly thatched, and the thatch is made from the Norfolk reed. Wonderful material that lasts for hundreds of years when it's put on properly. Here you can see some thatchers actually laying thatch onto a building. And good to see the local pub still thriving as well, and producing excellent meals and good beer. Real ales of England. In the background here, a huge punt gun mounted on the wall. Memories of wild fowling past.
ici. Dégagez, 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 dégagez. Good morning. Thorndike is also another very well-known landmark and I should be doing a painting here later on to show you in uh, acrylics. As I said earlier, there are many nature reserves and the wildlife is thriving. Here you see a great crested grebe. And although I didn't manage to see them, I gathered that some cranes had also migrated across and were feeding in the fields locally. And here's one of the last remaining worries, in fact the last trading worry, called Haythor. Lovely to see her still sailing. She's open to parties being taken out as well and trips. You can hire her. 
One of the books I always used to carry with me on these school trips and read to the children was Ghosts of the Norfolk Broads and St Bennet's has such a story. The story being that when the Vikings invaded one of the monks was rather naughty. He made a secret deal with the Vikings to let them in and open the gate one night. And the deal was that the Vikings would make him head abbot but in fact the Vikings didn't like traitors and made him abbot just for a matter of moments and then hung him from that very archway of the old monastery that you can see there. The windmill was a much later addition and could be seen in a famous painting. This was a watercolour by John Sell Cotman. Here it is. Possibly one of the prettiest broads is Sull House. Beautiful little woodlands around it are filled with bluebells in spring and it's purported in the ghost book that there are sightings of Roman legions marching by on certain misty moonlit evenings. The birds have become very used to visitors and in springtime there are masses of geese on here which will flock up to your bread when you come to feed them. Some of the broads you can access by road. This is one of the few. You can park at the top end and by a few hundred yard walk through the fields along a footpath you can reach this. But most of the broads require a boat to get to them and this is Good why dog. I bought my little boat for Rosie so that she can at last see the broads Holy for cup. the first time. You simply can't see them all by road. It's a little bit like Loch Lomond in Scotland. Again you can see it from the outside by road but actually exploring the islands and the loch can only really be done by boat. Stay. Holy fetch. Good dog. Come on in. Good girl. Come on. Here, 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 here. Sit. Sit. Drop. Good dog. Yes. Thank you. I'm always looking out for a photo opportunity and this little girl provides the ideal situation for a painting. Just across the river from Salhouse Broad is Hope for Nature Reserve. You witnessed this many years ago being built where they placed a whole pathway of sleepers throughout the marsh in one big horseshoe and then covered them in mesh so that you don't slip and stapled them together. You can walk through this floating pontoon of these sleepers through the deep marshes and witness the Hopeton Broad itself and all of the wildlife and nature and plants of the marshland quite safely. I think we can put up with one abomination like this on the Norfolk Broads. Fortunately it's the only mock steamer, paddle steamer,
and here's another beautifully kept and renovated wherry, this time a passenger wherry. There are some beautiful dwellings alongside the river, but in more recent years we've seen more modern housing almost reaching the waterside as you have here, but only in the existing areas where there's already building and uh, villages. Ranworth you can also reach by road, a delightful little village with a shop and lovely pub and good food, but the church is worth visiting because you can actually walk right to the top of the church tower, climb the steps and take films and photographs of the whole area right the way around. The church also boasts some of the best uh, rood screens in the country, these wonderful old medieval um, paintings that are so well preserved and such fine examples. Now let's wind our way up to Barton Broad. Again we shall see some wonderful properties that are near to the entrance to that. Hugely expensive and we're out of my pocket, but what a lovely place to live. I've no reason to doubt the story that Lord Nelson as a child, as a boy, learned to sail on Barton Broad.
This building, that's now owned by Norfolk Education Authority, used to be the home of Coleman of Coleman's Mustard. They say they made his millions by what was left on the side of the plate. And so we return back down the river in the direction of Potterheim. There, down the lane behind Martham Boatyard, is an old graveyard of boats. Here we have these wonderful old cruisers and things from years past, but many of them, I doubt, will ever function again. Some just skeletons. What was slightly amusing was that we noticed an old man come up on a bicycle, who then climbed up to one of these and appeared to still be living on it. Rather than just stay on the Norfolk Broads for the whole week, I decided to take Rosie across to the coast and visit Cromer. Cromer, famous for its crabs and lobsters and beautiful beach. He's gone. Good good dogs. Good girl. Good dogs. <laughs> good dogs. Spoiled the choice we'd be able to get. <laughs> <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
At one time, Roxham was a wonderful traditional boating village with lots of boatyards. Now nearly all of these have been turned into small housing estates with interconnecting little dikes and rivers and moorings between them. It's still thriving though, and as always has been amusing, the whole place seemed to be owned by a guy called Roy, who has his name on nearly every shop. I'm very pleased to say that I found the quality of fishing was excellent this year. There had been disease in years past that had killed a lot of the stock, and the nitrates and water quality had been very poor. But this year the quality seemed much, much better. In fact, as good as I've ever known it. Plenty of bream, perch and roach, and I'm sure those big monster pike were lurking around there somewhere. There we are, little roach. That's a nice fish. Yes, that's a very nice roach, isn't it? Oh, there we go. Look at that little doggy. Yeah. Yes. That's a beautiful roach, isn't it? Bring it into your hand. <laughs> That's a nice one to perch. Put your fingers on that spiky. Yeah. That's a lovely fish, that one. That's a nice perch again, yeah. Lovely perch. Let's it wind a bit more. Wind down to it a bit. That's it. Then lift it up and out. Yeah. Swing it over. It's a nice fish. Thank you. 
called it? Is it a cormorant? That's a cormorant. Well that's almost it then, that's my brief introduction for you to the northern Norfolk Broads. Even the dogs have settled in onto the boat now, being their first time ever. Let's just finish off this film now with a whole series of different photographs taken throughout the week, my favourite shots. And then we'll move on to doing the demonstration paintings, again from some of those uh, favourite photographs. Here we are at uh, Sand Dyke. I'm going to try a little acrylic on this bank with this gentleman as background has very kindly invited me to moor and stay. Just finished with this nice little round brush, Got my uh, stay with palette going. I'm now going to move to a larger brush. <coughs> right, I think what I'm going to do is um, paint. I'll paint the windmill about here and just get these trees and things in. Don't want all these cabin grooves and stuff in. So I'll get out with a nice round brush. Just the basics. Distantly. Because I'm, I want to put in, I may want to put in a uh, do that worry later. I'm just using my fingers at the moment to make a frame to find the composition I want and I've decided that uh, 
halfway will be about where the mast is of the boat here. with this nice little round brush, got my uh, stable palette going. Quickly enough. <laughs> Bye. 
very kind of you now. I just work through. <laughs> I just wish I could get a yacht just to sit there for a bit longer. <laughs> no thanks, I'm all right. I'll just keep it this. Very kind of you. Start off by working out the composition again. And as before, use a little bit of ultramarine and use my fingers to make a, a box as I look through for the composition. And what I want is this lovely big tall tree out to the right here and the reeds coming in. This tall tree comes right out through the picture. I'm going to change the composition just slightly. What I, I want from this. So if it's coming out and like that. So again I'm going to start with my turquoise, a little bit of white. So quite light at first. Quite light in the distance. More white. Very pale turquoise. Going on behind that, right the way through here. You want, don't want to make it too dark, too uh, too light, or you won't be able to show any white cells of any yachts later. So it wants to be a tad down. And once we've got that lovely turquoise established, then we can start to the, the pink to it, start to get the clouds coming up through here, a little bit more of the light blue.
beautiful turquoises and light blues then. Up through into here. Plenty of white paint on my brush. Right through. I like some of these mid greys. Add a little bit of brown to the blue. I'll just start to get these little grey clouds in. A little bit of pink into them. A little bit of pink in there. A little bit of mauve. There we go. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. I want it warmer than I just had more sienna. Now oh, I need to get the background colour for the lighter clouds. We'll use some. Yellow ochre and white to start off with. Blend those in. So you can see what we're doing. Give a shot of the same thing. The sky that we're doing. We've got plenty, quite mixed weather here really today. The sunny one minute and goes a bit cool the next. Let's flip these clouds in. Into this tree over here. Let's get the green grey of that. Take some Prussian blue. Some brown. Some sienna. A little bit of raw sienna. Put in there with a fairly warm. Get more of this blue into it. You get the furry edges of these trees coming up. There. Now a bit of yellow ochre. Touch of green, a touch of viridian, to start to get some of the sunlight into the background. Just meadow areas here. Sky back. Well, that's the stage we've got to now. I still feel that the tower. It's overtaking a bit much. So I might just take it back a fraction. I'm starting out too much. It's got to work. Now I think that'll about do it today.